Fluid, let's define it. It has a very simple definition, a substance that flows. A substance that flows, okay. Okay. A substance that flows. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, two kinds of, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one more thing. Uh, pledge problem, yeah. So a new pledge problem is out now, or it's, we're going to hit release on Canvas. So it is about energy. A pledge problem on energy, it's due next Tuesday at noon, a week from today at noon. Then you'll have a pledge on momentum that you did, a pledge on energy, and the exam is on momentum and energy and springs and elasticity. Okay, but yes, a new pledge will be out. I know you can do it. <clears throat> okay, so there are two fundamental kinds of fluids that we think about because there are two states of matter that flow. Right? There's a gas and there's a liquid. So fluids are very complicated. To really understand them, we, have to, we do have to think a little bit about their microscopic properties. Okay, we can't just say, oh, all fluids are the same, like physics usually does. We have to actually think about them a little bit. Okay, so first let's talk about a gas. Right, so you may know a little bit about a gas. These are non-interacting molecules. This is like one of the first things you learn in sort of your junior high physical chemistry course. That a gas is the little molecules bouncing around like little bowling balls, okay? Um, uh, let's see, the other one is that they are, sorry, oh, they're, they're compressible. You can have a gas in a container and if you squeeze it, you can actually make the gas's volume smaller because it's just little balls bouncing around, so they just don't have as far to bounce around, right? So we think of gases as um, compressible, all right? Okay, the other one is their density is low. It's so low. The density is low. How low is it? Say, how low is it? It's so low, the mean free path is longer than the trip to Brown. Thank you. BSWF, am I right? I don't know, somebody wrote that on here. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so it's, it's low. It's so low, I've lost where I am in my notes, that the weight is irrelevant. That weight is irrelevant. So we don't actually consider gravitational forces when we think about the pressure in a gas. How do you get the pressure in a gas? PV equals nRT. We're not doing that, right? But if you took some chemistry or some physical chemistry course a long time ago, you may recall PV equals nRT, or Boyle's law, PV equals PV, all that, right? So you get the pressure in a gas by thinking about pressure and volume and temperature, not really about weight. And it's because the densities are so low, okay? So what that means is it's irrelevant. And what I gotta say though is on a human scale, Right? So we're basically going to say that the pressure of the, of, the, of, the, of the atmosphere is constant when you go from like the floor to the top of my head. Now in reality, gas does have some density and does have some weight. And the pressure actually does change as you go from the floor to the top of my head. But it's so small you can't even tell. So we just pretend in this room, in anything you do, uh, the pressure is constant all the way from the top to the bottom of the room. That's what we mean by the human scale. If you measure the pressure all the way up to space, then it does go down, right? If you go high enough, there's enough uh, mass and the, the weight does matter, and then the gravitational force changes as you go far away, very complicated, right? So the pressure and the weight effects do matter as you go high enough, or if you go to other planets, the pressure might be different. It just depends on how big the planet is, how much atmosphere it has. You can use this information to embarrass your children at the National Air and Space Museum. They said, take a picture like you're on Mars. So there I am, taking a picture like I'm on Mars. Right, the atmosphere of Mars is very thin at the surface, much less than it is here, okay? Uh, let's just go through my vacation photos. Would that be more interesting? You're right, actually. <laughs> it would be a lot more interesting. Um, okay, so that's gas. So the class, this, what we're going to do is mostly about liquids, okay? We do have to think about gas, but mostly when we think about the gas, we just think it's applying atmospheric pressure uh, to the top of the, of the, of the liquid. Okay, so we're not really going to do detailed uh, fluid flow in gases. We're going to really focus here on the liquids, okay? So here's the, uh, you know, junior high, no, middle school, whatever, um, definition. The molecules 
stick, but move past each other. There you go, kind of an idea. And you've all done the little museum exhibit. You push the button and they move around and this is a liquid. Um, we say that fluids or that liquids are incompressible or that water is incompressible. That's completely incorrect, okay? Water is compressible. It's incompressible relative to gas, okay? So the, I looked up a few, like the compressibility uh, of water is about 10,000 times more than a gas. Or uh, the compressibility is 10,000 times less than a gas. So it's much less compressible than a gas. But it's like uh, 100 times less uh, or more compressible than like metal, okay? So it's not super incompressible. It's just among the different kinds of fluids, these are the ones that are incompressible. And for the problems we're going to do, we don't really consider the compressibility. You know, if you put, doing some hydraulics problem, and you put a big car on top of a fluid, you don't say, what's the Young's modulus of the fluid? How much are we compressing it here? You could, and it would be like a 1% difference in the answer. All we really care about is the weight of the fluid. So you may, if you like, go through and pretend it's incompressible. I'll put quotes on it to remind you it doesn't. In fact, the whole lecture, all of this entire course, there's quotes around the whole thing. And if you want to know why, you've got to take Dr. Stinson's quantum for whatever. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but then the, the final bullet is that the liquid is dense. So the weight, the gravitational force matters, okay? So there's the non-equation part of this lecture. Now let's get to the good part. The equation part. Okay, so just setting it up for you there. There we go. Let's start with some important properties of fluids um, that we got to have defined well and know how to deal with. Okay, properties of fluids. There's three we care about. All right, here we go. Volume. Okay, they're not complicated. You think you know volume, don't you? What is the MKS unit of volume? Oh, we use V. It's in meters cubed in the MKS system. So that's really annoying. If you want to do a problem with uh, newtons and kilograms, you've got to do your volumes in meters cubed. So just as a reminder, a more normal unit you might think about is a liter. So we don't try to make confusing unit conversion problems on purpose, but sometimes it happens. So how many a liter is what? It's a thousand mils. Oh, if you work in a lab, you know a milliliter is called a mil, but a mil is a centimeter cubed. So a liter, a thousand mils, one mil is a centimeter cubed, and then you can get that back to meters by saying, well, this is uh, 10 to the three <coughs> uh, off of there. So we want to go 3, 3, 3, 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed, or 10 to the minus 6 uh, meters cubed. Did I botch that? Let's see. <laughs> oh, no, it's centimeters. 10 to, minus, 10 to the minus, let me read my notes. 3, yes. I thought that was millimeters. Right. Work the conversion out for yourself. A liter is 1 1,000th of a meter cubed. Or if you think in terms of mills, sometimes when I have a problem in mills, that's a centimeter cubed, right? So if you want to take that all the way to a meter cube, then of course it's 10 to the minus 6. It'd be very embarrassing if those are wrong. Okay? This is all just, there's nothing fancy here. I just want you to be ready to think about the jump between liter volumes and meter volumes. And the key is this one, is that one centimeter cubed is one mil. With that, you can always get there. <clears throat> Unless you're talking in front of 150 people, then you're screwed up. Okay, so that's it, volume. Didn't fluid start off nice and easy? Volume, you're okay with volume. Length times width times height. All right, let's look at density. Density, okay. Density we define with rho. I will be very careful with my p's and rho's. Okay, I'll do my best to put a stem on the p and to just whew, the rho, all right? Uh, but a rho, because they look the same and they're all over these equations. The rho, uh, the mass density, is the mass over the volume. Right? Maybe you knew, and the MKS unit is kilogram per meters cubed. Oh, no. All right. So that's a weird unit. You might think <coughs> air doesn't weigh anything. How does air? Yeah, it does. Air has mass. So let's look at a few numbers just to give you an idea 
Air is about one kilogram per meter cubed. Uh, if you took a meter cubed is really big, right? That's a lot of air. So about one. And water is about a well, water is by definition water is a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. So there's your two canonical fluids there. So when we say the density of uh, gas is low, that's what we mean. It's one one thousandth the density of water. So if you're talking about how the weight affects things, the uh, gas doesn't matter too much. Okay. A metal is like eight thousand. So metal is more than a gas. All right. I'm already tired. What is MKS? I don't know. Meters, kilograms, seconds, I guess. It's the standard unit, the Système International. <laughs> no? OK. That's the standard units that we use in physics. I don't know how you made it uh, this far on the previous exams. Yes, kilogram, meters, seconds, everything else is derived from those. So when we're keeping everything in kilogram, meters per second, that's what MKS means. I guess it stands for meters, kilograms, seconds. 